Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Marvel Podcast. And today we've got an absolutely bosh, special, amazing guest. We've got um, Elliot. Elliot is also known as Speedleman Walks on Instagram. So if you don't know him, please go and get on him. I'm already putting that out there. But what we're going to be talking about today is why he does all his walking, his story, and it's deep. Like his story so deep, and it's it was heartwarming, but also proud and, and emotional. We also talk about suicide and overdosing, the importance of having like minded people around you and close friends and being able to just be open, especially as a man talking. It's um this is an episode that we all have agreed that it is a it's a Hall of Famer already. I'm not gonna lie. It um it's a very good episode, so I really hope that you do enjoy it today. Take some things away and also I think some people might just be inspired. So please enjoy the episode. And then like See, for me, observation. Mm-hmm. My mental health, I no one even knows where it came from. Yeah. Because my mum always says to me, like, it's not you, it's not you. Like, because we, we've had a few suicides in our family mm-hmm. and it's all been on my mum's side. And nice. it's like my brother is he, he struggled like me as well. My older brother, he's 28 or 29 now. And he went through a time where he was off work for the year, he's on all these meds, and it was like it's all my mum's side. So yeah. it's like passed down the family is hereditary. Yeah, hereditary. Yeah. So it's like Obviously, no one wants to be born with a mental health illness, but mm. it's just how you overcome it and like what you do to, to get on with it, it mm. if you like. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Um, actually, there's a question actually before we crack on again. Is there anything that you kind of want to get out of this, like a type of message? Because we can kind of divert to make sure that we do hit that type of thing. The only thing I want people to do is to speak up. I okay. want, I want, I want to get it out there for people to. If you are struggling with anything in your life, if there is anything that you're holding back, anything that you've got on your chest, mm. to get it out there, whether yeah. it's to a friend, whether it's to your family member, whatever, make sure you speak to someone about it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, don't just keep it to yourself. Because when I bottled it up, it is when I, that's when I broke. Like, mm. I kept everything. I didn't tell anyone. Like, when I was in a mental institution, many of my mates didn't even know yeah. I was in there because it, it all came from where the mouth of my mum. Having to tell me mates like I'd like to allow visitors to come in and see me, but like I I was ashamed of who I was. I was ashamed of the person that I was. I didn't want my mates to see me like that. I didn't want my family to see me like that. And I didn't tell anyone about what was what was going on in my head, in my mind. I just because I, did, I didn't want to interfere with anyone else's life. You get what I mean? Yeah. Like I felt like if I put all my problems onto someone else, they're gonna start stressing, they're gonna start worrying, and it's gonna affect them. But now I've realized like. When I did start speaking up, I because I, I speak as I said, I speak very freely about it now because I feel like it is very, very important to get your get your message out, get your points across, and that is where my life started to change. Like just going to a counselor, therapy, and just bawling my eyes out to someone who I'd never met before because I felt like I felt safe because I knew like this person was just going to talk to me and they were just going to tell me straight mm. someone who I don't know. But obviously, when you think about going to tell people, you don't want your mates to take the piss out of you. And that, that's what I was scared of. If I spoke to people about it, like they'd think of me different. So it was more of like an ego thing for me. Now I don't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. Really don't give a fuck. I'll speak openly about anything and hope to get people to speak out and feel the change that I've felt in my life. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. How old was you though? Like when all that happened? I think I was... What are you, 24? 25. Now? 25. Yeah, I, I was 17 or 18 when I was in Brodo. Broadly. Really? Yeah. Remember, like, can you remember, like, the lead up to it? Like, how you were feeling, what your days were like? Shit. Yeah. I think it was, it was after, like, my third, I had, like, three suicide attempts, all overdoses. Survived them all. At Survived, 17, 18? Su- yeah. Fuck me, lad. Mm. Yeah. Just swallowing yeah. tablets for fucking, for something to do, literally, mm. because I felt like I want to, to be honest, they were, there was one of them, I think, when a suicide attempt, it was just me wanting to cause pain to myself because I knew, like, after my first suicide attempt, swallowing up, like, tablets, and I, I was obviously in the hospital and that and fucking getting treated. I knew how, like, I felt at that time and I wanted to put myself through that again. Knowing that I'd survived that, I thought, I want to just cause as much pain to myself as I possibly can and put myself, like, to torture myself kind of thing. Mm. And I used to fucking cut all my legs got scars now and that's another reason behind why i wear the speedos as well I, which I, I haven't really spoken about yeah. but it's like a lot of people have when i've been on my walks and stuff and people have seen me in my speedos and i tell them that I'm in, like all my walks for mental health they see me legs because i've got literally scars like that big down both legs yeah 
I don't know if you can see them on any of my pictures, no. but I do, I do sometimes, but like when I'm doing videos and that, I'll point the camera down towards them. You know what I mean? People do notice them and like, but like, that's just me, like they're part of me now. Mm. And I'm not ashamed to show that. Like I've been through that. And it's like, you get tattoos, tattoos are a story. You can have a story on your arm as art. I see that as a story for me. Cause like, I can look back at that now and I can remember the point I was at in my life. Remember how low I am. And then to see how I am now and the person I am now, it's like, I can look back at them and laugh at it. I'm just not ashamed of it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that's some story because I, I was looking at you on Instagram and I was thinking to myself, has he experienced anything like himself kind of thing? I was always, because you're, you're such an outgoing lad. Mm. You're, you're proper funny. You're dead chill. And I thought, because my dad, before he was like, had you come around to tell the story? I went, I actually don't know. Yeah. I, went, I don't know if he's been through it, someone close to him has been through it, or he's just doing it because he knows there's good awareness. And well, it, that, it's all free. Yeah, it's literally. I've lost friends to it. I've lost quite a few friends to it to suicide. A few fam family members, and I know if I can get out there and just speak my message, and like people see me doing well from coming from such a hard, like a hard time, then there is great awareness because like people will start. It'll start to make a change in the world. Then if everyone just starts to get up, fucking get out there and do shit, and like for for me, like my thing to get out there and go and do is to go and walk mm -hmm. and. When I'm out on these walks and I see people and everyone's looking at me and they're all smiling and everyone's beefing at me and just for me to know I can go out there and put a smile on someone else's face and even make someone else's day that little bit better, that means the world to me as well. Mm -hmm. Because I feel I feel good then knowing that I can change someone else's day for for the good. Mm -hmm. You feel good and you look good. I feel. <laughs> <laughs> I do get told I look alright. I was like, I do. <laughs> uh, but obviously, when you were younger. So like 17, 18, we're, we're all coming out, going into like our adolescent stage. We've all That's got past our puberty. We're all confused. We're all stuck. We're a bit like, do we go to uni? Do we go yeah. to six one? Like we're all, that pressure's on us. And then like some of us are having kids. Some people like driving cars. That can have like, a, like little things like that can have an effect yeah. on us. But it's like for you to put yourself through that, swallowing tablets, whatever tablets they were, cutting yourself in the legs, then I'll give you the story. Like... Do you, can you remember why you were going down that route? I didn't know where I wanted to go with my life Yeah, at all. Like I had no clue what I wanted to do. Obviously, coming out of school, I went to college to go and do a junior apprenticeship. And it was just like, I enjoyed it, but it was something that I didn't want to do. And I beat myself up over it. And it was like, where do I want to go with my life? I, I just couldn't piece together what I actually wanted to get out there and do. And I'd, I'd literally... Beat, as I said, yeah, I'd beat myself up over it. I used to punch myself in the face. I used to give myself black eyes. Like, I used to honestly destroy myself. I've got a bear mark there from a pair of hair straighteners, which I've done myself, just to hurt myself. Just turn them on and clip my ankle together, yeah. Lads. Literally, just to, just to cause maximum pain to myself. What was because I felt like I weren't good enough. Yeah. I've never, ever felt like I was good enough, ever. Is there, do you reckon there's a reason, though, why you might have thought that? I still to this day I don't I can't think of any reason to what makes me feel the way I feel. Mm. I'll never have an explanation for for the way my my mind works. And no matter how much I try to get answers, even when I went to counselling, like I've I got diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. And to be honest with you, I don't I haven't really done much research on it because I feel like the more I look into that and the more I read that, like I've it would just alter my mind even more to think this is what I've got. Like right now, I don't like to think of myself as having a mental mental health illness. I like to just get up and get on a, about my life and be as positive as I possibly can. I know I have. I know I've, I'll always have one, but I don't like to think about it. Mm. Because the more you think about it, you, you start to think like, oh, you know, like, like di being diagnosed with something is not nice. And I, I'd like to try and avoid the diagnosis, but it's always going to be there in the back of my mind. So the best thing I can do is to get up there and just live with it. I, but I, as I said, I don't. I have not researched it. Mm. I don't know anything that it, it entails at all. I'm not interested. Yeah. So the more you read into things, the more it is going to fuck you up. Yeah, it, it's true. Like, because like, say for instance, someone's got what like that and um, borderline personality disorder. They could have depression, anxiety, schizophrenia, whatever it yeah. is. Like you said, if you read about it, you know more about it. You know, like what what it goes through people's minds. 
the environments that yeah. it goes through, other people's stories, and then you start applying that to yourself. Exactly. And then you're like, oh no, I can't do that because I've got anxiety. I'm not allowed to leave the house right now. Everything's yeah. just a barrier for you, lads, and you can't get up. Everyone's got depression. Everyone's got anxiety. Everyone's got mental health illnesses. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. Everybody on this earth has got some some kind of mental health health illness going on in their head. Mm. And some people deal with it better than others, do you know what I mean? But it's about finding your way. Everyone will have their own way of coping. Mm. Mine, throw me speedos on and go walk. Yeah. That is my way of coping. If I'm feeling down at all, I'll go out there on a walk and I'll make other people smile to make me smile. That's a, that's a, that's how it works, mm. honestly. I, just knowing that I can do something like that makes me, oh, I'm so proud. Mm. I'm so proud. Glad you I, should be, lads. It, it boosts me a lot because the, the, Im- the impact you're yeah. already having obviously you're getting loads of engagements and all that and it's great like you were saying like you, your followers and all that jumped yeah. up and that's great you know like, like oh it gives you like that dopamine rush but it's the impact like that mm. you're having and also the impact on yourself you've talked about like a lot on your mum's side about yeah. like there's been a lot of suicide and all that and then think about like what your mum thinks about you on a day-to-day Literally. basis kind of thing and she thinks oh my hell like my hell's doing this my hell's making all these people happy he's doing all this from my heart. It's Tell mum's at me if I don't make me bed before 10, though. What's <laughs> 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 that call me off guard? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's true, though, like, like, you do an absolute bit, lads. And, like, I'd say, like, a lad that's so close to me, even though we're in Kenny right now when I grew up here. Like, we're, <laughs> yeah. we're around the corner, so we'll catch corner. up for a cup of tea soon. But it's like, any lad that can grow up in Hailwood, it's just... You're a lad, yeah. aren't you? And like, you're no different than any lad that grew up in Vizaki and I grew Literally. up in Walton or whatever. You can still get up and go out, go can. and do stuff. And you can. find your thing, lad, through on your speedos. Literally. Yeah, Joe does, it, Joe does it on a day-to-day basis and Derek does them in the bath. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like, that's the thing, though, man. And we were saying, like, about mental health, everyone's got it, which is so true. Yeah. Everyone, Everyone's got it to a degree. So, like, I work in an autistic school. And obviously they're in there because they've got a higher level of autism. Yeah. I think we're all on the spectrum for either autism, ADHD or whatever. We've all got a hint of something. But it's when you reach a certain threshold, that's when you didn't need the extra support. It's when people hit that certain threshold of depression, anxiety, personality disorder, that's, schizophrenia, yeah. whatever it is, that's when you then need the help. But we mask it more than others. We're able to cope with it more than others. Yeah. And then we're also finding ways as well that we can be able to deal with it. And then... Unfortunately, there are people that will just sit there and dwell. Literally. But if you can get up and walk out lad, in a pair of speedos and a cowboy exactly. hat with a 15 kg bag. There's no excuse. Yeah. There's there's no excuse for someone to be able to get off full mm-hmm. trackies and go around shifting. Literally. Yeah. So like that's one of them. Like you've got to fucking give it to yourself there. I I, I give it to myself every yeah. fucking day. Yeah. I really do. You know, every every single day when I wake up, it's I'm always planning yeah. for my next walk. Like where am I gonna go? And like I'll try and avoid to go to the same places that I've already been. Because I want to get it out to as many places as I possibly can. It's like if I'm walking to the same place over and over, like then people that like that community is already seeing me, mm. and like there's, there's loads of Facebook groups now, like from different places that I've been, like where you'll have, like I've seen them all, I get tagged in them all the time. Where like you'll have like little communities. Oh, does anyone see the man walking down around the road in his speedos and his cowboy hat? And it's like to have them little communities, and like yeah, if I do go back to them one day. Maybe they might recognise me. You know what I mean? Because like I've had when I was out on my hundred k walk the other day, <clears throat> we walked past the place that invited us in for a coffee and a cake because they seen us walking, and then we had another place that invited us in for a sausage dinner and mash, sausage dinner, and ma- sausage dinner and mash and gravy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> was that a complicated order? That was a complicated <laughs> order for me. Yeah, wow. Uh, so where was it that you done that walk? <clears throat> so we started in Macclesfield. Yeah, uh, Macclesfield to Delamere. Yeah, and then Delamere back to Macclesfield. So it's literally, I'll show you the aim. Um... Oh, is that why on your story you wouldn't tell me about three hours later? Yeah. I was thinking to myself, lad, you just gone for like a mad walk. Why oh, you no. Just on... no, that was that was yesterday in Delamere, that. Oh, was that yesterday? That was yesterday when I went for a walk in Delamere. Oh, lad, I don't even know what time. Oh, we're playing COVID. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, was the, that was the lap that we'd done. Put only bed band and can't walk worth it. Um, congrats, you just hit your PR on the 50k, 100k. What? Moving for 17 hours. How don't you get lost? Google Maps. <laughs> <laughs> Google Maps. But you know what? It was heartbreaking because we had put it, like, when, obviously, when we started, we put the location in to Delamere. Mm. And it was like, 
Jordan said it was going to take us 19 hours to get there walking. Yeah, what the 31 mile. Oh. And we're like, how, how, like, obviously, we knew it was chatting shit because but when I usually go out and do a walk, I usually do like 20 mile in six hours. So we knew that, like, the time scale that we were going to be working on, but it got to like the 70k mark. And we were just like, wow, like, this is soul destroying. Like, my knees, my feet. He's a champ, him. Yeah. He's absolutely unbelievable. Like, I, I wouldn't have got to the end without him. Because if, if I was doing that walk on my own, I would have got to 80k and I would have been like, nah, I'm going home. I'm going home. Because I put my clothes back on at that point as Did well. Did you? Yeah, I sat down. Yeah, I sat down for a good 20, 20 minutes. Fucking my knee was in bits. I'm sat in my speedos. I think it was like 10 o'clock at this point. And I'm like, wow. Like, my whole body was just shaking. My knee was trembling. I was thinking, I need to put my clothes on and I need to go home. So I put my clothes on, get up. I was like, listen, I'm going home. He's like, you fucking not. I was like, I am. I'm going home. I'm going to get my dad to come pick me up. And I was not, he was like, you're not. I'm not letting you go home. You're walking with me the whole way. It was like, I'll drag you to the finish line if I have to. So I was like, go on, sad. I'll see what I can do. And he literally, arm around me, soldiered me, soldiered me to the end. He wasn't he wasn't finishing without me. Like, you know what I mean? And I thought, I thanked him so much after it because I thought, if I would have went home then, mm. and 80K in out of a 100K challenge, I would have been so disappointed in myself. Like, I, I would have fucking ruined me because I haven't backed down from a single walk. So to get to that challenge and get that far in and to back down, I would have been like, no. And I messaged all, them, all, all the lads in the group chat as well. Mm. I was like, listen, boys, I'm coming home. I can't do it. And he's like, oh, you fucking pussy. You're getting it done now. There's no way you're turning back down. And I was like, and they all waited up for me as well to make sure that I'd finished it. Yeah. They all stayed up. And obviously, as I said, we, fucking, we finished it half two. And they all fucking gave me a little round of applause, fucking sending the voice notes into the group chat when I finished. Like, so I felt good. But it felt awful to get into bed after it. Mm. Terrible. Like, I felt like shit. I'm not surprised all that. Felt, okay. felt so sick. Tossed and turning in bed, couldn't feel me. Literally waist down, couldn't feel anything. I'm just like this in bed. Uh, I had two fake as well. It's like, yeah, you know, this is not for me. And I woke up the next morning, didn't eat all day, all fucking day. Didn't even eat either. Felt like shit. I swear, it broke me mentally and physically. I was finished. And it wasn't until yesterday when I realised. I was like, wow, well done, Elias. What a fucking accomplishment that is. Literally three days later. It took me to realise because the only thing that I had on my mind was pure agonising pain mm. and like how broken I was. It's like when you're saying that as well. Think about it when people go out for a bevy, like they can have a couple of bevies, get drunk, and then the next day you'll feel shit for like two, three days. Literally. You just walked a hundred K. I know. And it took you three days. So like that's even that's something lad. Like even like a little thing like that. But um I wanna go back to before though. Yeah. Where you were saying about like the people and all this, you go out, you make people smile because I was trying to think about this. You make people smile, it makes you smile. Yeah. On the days though, where you don't get out and do that and you feel like you need to smile, but you're not walking, what do you do for yourself there? I'm not going to lie, smoke weed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've, no, but I'm all, the thing is with me, I, I, I'm always active. Mm. I'm always out doing something, whether I'm with the lads or even if I'm not out in my speedos. I'll still be out walking somewhere. I'll go, I'll make sure to get steps in every single day. Yeah. And one thing for me, which really, really does make me feel so happy, is just sitting somewhere and people watching. Oh, what? Do you know what? Yeah, I used to people always do watching. that with me dad. Like, in Costa and time, just people watch. I love it. Yeah. I, everywhere I go, I'll sit down somewhere and I'll sit there for a good hour, hour and a half, and I'll just watch everyone go by. And just to see everyone's different emotions and how everyone copes with life is just mad. Just everyone's got their own little battles going on and everyone's still out there doing something. They're all getting about, so no matter what they've got getting on, like going on in their head, they're all still out doing something. Mm. And that, that for me is like, if everyone else can do it, so can I. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's What's that thing called? I don't know if any use my taxi now, but no way you look at like different people and go, wow, they've got their own lives. Do you like, you don't, you get that? Yeah. Like you look at someone and go, They've got their own life. They've got a family. I've got no idea about. They got. They've got a job that I've got no idea Matt, about. And I, I do this on like the motorway and stuff when I'm driving. And you I'm look at people. Yeah, every driving. car is going somewhere and doing yeah, their own yeah. thing. I think literally. I'm not. I'm not the only person in this world. Do you know what I mean? Well, yeah. it's, it's crazy. Bad. It makes you think, though, doesn't it? And you put yeah. your lights on pause for a sec. Like, say you're looking over like a view. So you got like a nice scenic yeah. view or something there, a nice whip, and you're mm -hmm. like, wow, I 
it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Everyone's just doing their own thing. Yeah, because I can sit there and think, like, I can be there on the couch with my bed or whatever, with the dog watching a film or whatever, and think, wow, I wonder what the boys are doing right now. Literally. Like, they could be, like... Doing anything. Yeah, could be out, could be getting on it, could be going for a bevy, could be nailing the birds. Yeah. Could yeah. be anything. <laughs> anything but, like, I've got no idea what other people are doing. Got no idea you what my neighbours... You just little bubble. Yeah. And it's like... So we're, we're roughly the same age, one year between us. So we go back seven, eight years. And it's like, you're going through your shit and all that. Like, so you're going yeah. through the stage of like, you were taking uh, swollen pills, clipping your ankle and all that for pain. And I was going through like a heavy breakup with my first ever girlfriend. And I thought, oh my God, I'm, I'm the saddest person in the world yeah. right now. But you've got no idea what someone else is going through. Crazy, yeah. yeah, but obviously it's in you interpret your pain and you can only feel your pain. But it's like, you've got no idea what someone's going through. Literally. Lad, and it's what was you doing at 16, 17? What was I doing? Can you remember? Uh, so 16, we finished. Me and Derek finished sixth form together. Went to St. Francis of Assisi over the road. And then got ready to go to uni. I, walk, I remember walk first day at uni. I was in um, Iron Marsh Campus, Barco Road. And I remember walked in that day because I left PE with like a star. Well, distinctions. And I went to that course thing, oh lad, I'm gonna be this is gonna be piss easy. This dropped out after two years, so it's gonna be hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that was that. I don't actually remember much of like 16, 17. There was a lot of no, because you I've got all my time mixed Nobody up here. Really yeah. Uni was Nobody 18. Nobody has a clue what to do no. at that age. No. You're just a kid with like literally you just leave school and play, like, What now? Yeah. It's all a <laughs> place. Nobody's yeah. got that that plan, and like a lot of lads our age, in it, we were all thinking like, like what, 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 are, what do we need do? to do? Yeah, yeah, like, what yeah, yeah. especially at that age. But, I yeah. feel like that there's far more struggle for men than there is for women, though, because women know how to speak. Mm. Women, girls will speak and speak and speak, and girls are always there for each other. But men, it, as I said, it is an ego thing. Mm. Like we don't want to speak up. We don't want anyone to know the battles we're going through. Mm. We'd rather just keep it up, keep it to ourselves, and just. But I've put on a fake smile, make everything look like it's good and you're happy. But it's it's not the right it's not the right life to, life to live at all. Did you yeah. feel like a burden? Yeah. When you try to speak to someone, yeah. You don't want to give them your problems because they've got yeah. their own shit going exactly. on. It's like why have I got to add more to your plate when you're probably dealing with your own stuff? So I'm just gonna keep it to myself and I'm gonna crack on with it yeah. and it's gonna disappear. And then it hits appointments like this hasn't disappeared. I'm still going on with it, but now I'm much worse, much worse place. But I was thinking to myself as well, like if I'm, if I've got all this going on in my head, and like I used to hide it well, because mm. like now everyone, everyone says to me like, oh, like I didn't, I didn't have a fucking clue, I didn't have a clue like any of that was going on, and it was because how well I used to hide it. I was like, literally kind of the same as I am now, just like dead outgoing, like always got a smile on my face, always laughing, but it was back then it was all fake, mm. so 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 fake. And I was thinking, if I can hide it this well, how do I know that I'm not going to go and tell this to someone who has also got something going on in their head, but they're also hiding it as well as mm -hmm. I am? And that's the thing, lad, isn't it? Like, you could walk over to one of your mates and go, lad, you know what? I need to speak to someone. I feel most comfortable yeah. talking to you. And you sit there and then you go, lad, you know, I'm going through this. Like, I'm not myself. I feel depressed. Don't want to do anything. Don't know where my life's going. And those they can turn around to you and go, lad. I'm feeling the same, literally. And you go, oh my God. And then you Big just shout relief. about it. It will be amazed how many people haven't done it. But then how many people have done it and like had that big shy. Yeah. Like we just went, do you know what? Fucking hell, mate. Do you know what? I needed that. What's going on with you? And then you've got so much in common. But it's just. Uh, it, it's good though, because I, I go to the same. One of our mates killed himself. It was five years ago, Kurt. And uh, we have a little coffee club for him now. Uh, in Runcorn every I'm other week on a Saturday, yeah, and um, all the lads, and is, yeah, and um, we have a we have a coffee club for him mm -hmm. in Runcorn of a Saturday every other week. We are, there's like fifteen of us that go, and literally we're there for an hour, go and have a break, have a coffee, and everyone who's there is just dead open about everything that's going on. And we went, we had a retreat uh, last week where we went to Ogden by Snowden. I saw that on your yeah, story. Yeah. We were there for two nights. And we just went, we like went walking, loads of barefoot walks. I got all the lads in the speedos. It's like 15 of us just out in the mountains in our speedos, trekking around barefoot. Yeah. We <laughs> I saw you, you were standing in the puddles and that way. Yeah, 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 in the puddles. Yeah. And then when we got to the top, lad, we'd do some breath work, some yoga, and then just like cold water dips early in the morning and stuff. And like we had, we had like a sharing circle. And 
between us all, the 15 of us, I think the sharing circle went on for three hours. Just like we had passed this little bell round, we'll all have a chat about how we're feeling, how the weekend's been and like how you've overcome shit from the past. And to see how honest and open everyone in that room was, there was loads of tears. And for 15 lads to be in the room and for lads to sat, be sat there crying, I fucking cried. Mm. Most of the lads in there cried when they were telling the stories. You know what I mean? And to be able to just be in there and have that many people around and all listening to you and all understanding and just being honest with each other and open, it, it felt good to see that. Like, that's, that is what you need. Like, if you can get that to happen all over the world, just all the lads in the, in, in the same room, get everything off your chest. Speak openly. Have a fucking cry. Who's asked? Mm. What are tears? You know what I mean? Who gives mm. a fuck? If you're going to cry, crying shouldn't be shamed, I don't think. No, it's not. Like, it's, a, it's a big part of our human it emotion. Is. Like, oh, we come out of God. our mother's fucking crying. Literally, Literally so much. We'll cry when exactly. you've actually got genuine I don't problems. I see a problem with crying. Mm. If I need to cry about anything, fucking best believe I'm crying. Mm. If I need to get, get something out, I will fucking sit there and I'll cry. I don't give a fuck. Mm. Like, we've been doing this since October and like I've been in mental health for some time before that, a couple of years, but I'm not going to lie, I always think that's the best thing I've ever heard to do with mental health for lads. The like, strength in numbers really, isn't it? With yeah. all of these coming yeah. together. It's, it's, it's a unity, isn't it? It's that's what that is. It, it was crazy. Yeah. It was Energy. crazy. Three hours of us literally just sat there passing the bell on, passing the bell on and just everyone's uh, it, it was cr honestly crazy mm -hmm. everyone's speeches everyone gave such a good speech and just everyone was there for each other and we just had give a big round of applause for each other at the end and it was just unbelievable to see and then we went to the fucking sports hall to play dodgeball till three o'clock in the morning it's <laughs> 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 like, like we've got a lot off our chest let's go and throw some balls let's at go whack some balls at each other's heads yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the gap that we were staying in was boss. We had like we, we were all in bunk beds. It didn't remind me of you know like Colomendi and shit like yeah. that. Yeah. And it was like we were all like all of us like twenty five to thirty. Actually, there was a few lads there who were like in the forties, fifties, and that. Swear to you, <laughs> yeah. And um, we, we were just like big kids, literally in the sport. We had a whole sport all to ourselves, fucking booting the balls around, fucking dodgeball a lot. My video was on my phone. There, yeah. it was all playing dodgeball. Lad. It was sick. Hot yoga in the hall a lot, and just for us to all be there of a fucking together and having a good time together and sharing story, stories with each other is what I need more of. Mm. I need to hear more stories from people like that because it, it makes you smarter than it makes you more aware to everything that's going on when you hear people, other people's sides of things. And yeah. I feel like I need an invite to that, you know. Yeah. Kate, what's what's it called? Kate's Coffee Club. Yeah. yeah. Well, they're yeah. on Facebook, Instagram. On Instagram. Or... They're on yeah. Instagram, lad. And um, we do. So there's another retreat coming in the summer. Yeah. And we, we were looking, to be honest, um, there's a few people backed out from it. Yeah. And we was we were still looking for more people to looking come. For more, yeah, yeah, I put it on my story, like yeah. saying, like, does anyone want to fucking Is this with the Keelan? Yeah, with Keelan. Yeah, with Keelan, yeah. Yeah, 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 Keelan, yeah. well, when I started doing my walks, he was the first one to complete a walk with Was me. he? Yeah. yeah. Does he still do his boxing and that? He still does his boxing. Does he lads, like, yeah, still smashing? Yeah, he's, he's a boxing coach now. Does he? Yeah. Yeah, he does all the pads and that. Oh, right. Smashing mm -hmm. it. Loving life. So what the K Coffee Club? Is that like every month that you do? Nah, so every two weeks on a Saturday, yeah. Eleven o'clock till twelve. And then we usually, so we'll go in there, we'll have our break, you have a little coffee and that, and yeah, then we yeah. usually go for a walk. Yeah, yeah. And we'll yeah. just like, obviously, all be walking next to each other, having a little talk and that. <laughs> 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 but all having a talk and that, do you know what I mean? It's, nice. it's, it's good, lad. But they're doing another retreat, and they got a, um, they set up a GoFundMe page for the retreat for Kate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like 20 quid each for us to go to this big, massive fucking gap, lad, and all food included, and just like everything, lad. It was. God. 20 quid each 20 quid each it was, that, that's yeah. a shout though mm. like two nights lad and yeah. we were just active all day every day i want that we need to get let, in. Let, 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 a... our group needs to start um, <laughs> open the game <laughs> you know breakfast cooked dinner cooked tea cooked loads of snacks everywhere just every like you, there was no way we could have run out of food i think we had like fucking like 50 60 hot dogs fucking two big bowls of scouse two big bowls of chili just lads, we had every, every You're there with just 20 bags of nuts. <laughs> <laughs> 20 bags of nuts. Lads, yeah. Gotta get you your nuts out of the I actually did have a lot of nuts over that weekend, to be honest with you, as well. I did. We can't take that out of, that out of context, you know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> 15 lads in a retreat, too many yeah. nuts. Yeah, because did you also watch the boxing as well, didn't you? Yeah, we had yeah. the well, we had fucking brought a big massive projector screen. Because while, while we were there, we were doing like seminars as well. Mm. Like where um, Luke, the fella who set it all up, um, put like um, 
do PowerPoints together beforehand just to like learn about shit and stuff. So we'd like sit in there in the living room for a bit and we'd go through PowerPoint by PowerPoint for like an hour, two hours a day, mm. just going through it. And then we'd go on to something else. So we took that day and we had a dodgy box. So we threw the dodgy <laughs> box in and fucking got the box in. And that's why we were there. Well, if it's related to this, what was the seminars about? Um, Just like stoicism and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. Just like, yeah. just, yeah. It's just like to be honest, I'd never, I'd never heard about it until yeah. that. Do you know what I mean? So for him to come up because he, he's very, very, he's got a lot of knowledge. Luke mm. reads Shout a lot of books. Luke is get yourself on here, mate. <laughs> he would as well, you know. Good. He would because I you know what? Anyone. He's got a very strong mind, lad. He's, mm. he's got, a, he's got his head on his shoulders, like in the way he speaks. Like he's like me. Yeah. He's like me. He speaks like we're, we're very similar, but he's a lot more intelligent than me. And he knows a lot more He's about fucking. And stuff. He, yeah, yeah, and he knows a lot more shit than I don't fucking know, lad. <laughs> like these words and that, and like, all, like all all his stuff like dates back years and years and years ago, where he's got all his research from. But like. He knows what he's talking about. He, he knows what he's talking about. Like, mm. he would come on here as well and speak as well. You know, but... like, I, don't, I don't know if I was to speak to someone that was like that intelligent, I'd probably sit there and just look at them and, and think, what? Talk. <laughs> so, uh, what is yeah. 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 Do you want to just talk for a whole hour? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Turn this camera yeah. off. <laughs> we'll just get off, lad. We'll just go for a walk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, with your walks and all that then anyway, because obviously that's what you're all about. Yeah. Going to a bit of a deep dive, because we know you told us the story before about how you became speed on one. Yeah. <laughs> but obviously there'll be people here who probably never watched the What's Happening and all okay. of that. And I feel like one like a good vibe in the minute we're all just taking the fear. Tell people about how you became speed on one. Speed on one is came from Big Nasty. I've done a 226 mile walk around Tenerife. I get to, th- I finished my walk, completely finished my walk. Phone call, get yourself down here. Someone wants to meet you. Bang, here's me walking along. Boom, big nasty speed on man. And then I was born. And then I'm here. And now I'm sat here <laughs> in this very by room, big nasty. baptized on the spot. And now I'm here in this very room, in the flesh, in the f- <laughs> blood, sweat, and tears. Every, everything, everything's in this room right yeah, now. No, mate. I love it, that, Funny that you know, yeah. big nasty. That's the greatest story that I've got in my life right now. Mm. 100%. My knees trembled when I walked through that door. Really? I was thinking, wow, what the fuck have I walked into? Honestly, I swear to God. My legs were like jelly. I felt like a kid. I was like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fanboy. I'm fanboy. You know, yeah. like, he's like, speedo man, speedo man. I'm like, what the fuck is going on in my life? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I meant to go go-karting with him and everything, lad. And just wow. to be on the track with him and fucking lapping him. It's mad. <laughs> what are you doing? Like you <laughs> what are you doing? What are you on his YouTube and that? Did you yeah, say on Driver Dave's YouTube, Dave, YouTube it is, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah he posted um, a vlog yeah. of the, the whole day go karting with him. Yeah, Where you know was what? it there? Was you in Birmingham? No, nah, that was a terror leaf, that. Oh, no. Oh, that was oh, a terror leaf, yeah. Because yeah. so you were we saying the story before about Birmingham, weren't you? Yeah. <laughs> but we, we went go karting and then obviously uh, Big Nasty's got a Jamaican restaurant up there as well, hasn't he? So we went back there and fucking just had loads of chicken, loads of lamb patties, and just fucking loads of shit. Yeah, yeah. good stuff as well. And he was just chefing up for us himself. So, my that, story. That, my story, sick story, built a story. I can't wait until someone can give us a name. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Fucking crown the name Speed on Man. Like. How long ago was it? Yeah, so I flew him? out on New Year's Eve. Yeah. Yeah, so mm. it was a few months ago now. Yeah. And then I, f- I got home. Just before my birthday. I think I got home like the 24th, 23rd. So I was there for, or 21st, I got back three weeks. I was there for. Yeah. So this long. Is, you could say you've, you've been walking, what, five months? Five, six months, was it? When did I start? November. Yeah. Five months. Or October. Was it was either October or November. So yeah. how many months is that? Oh, six, five, six, oh, five, five, yeah. five, six. Five, six months. So, first walk. I was actually kind of want to go through your walking journey, you know? Yeah. So first walk, where was that? First walk was a marathon to Southport. Yeah. Straight down the rally. Yeah. From, I literally walked out my front door in my speedos. Bosh, yeah. bosh, bosh. Straight down the rally. It took me seven hours and seven minutes. Mm. And that was my first walk. A few of the lads came to meet me at Southport. Uh, and you know what? I remember how fucked I was after that. Yeah. My feet. Because this was all trial and error for me. I was thinking, don't know what shoes to wear. Don't know what I need. Like... Didn't have a fucking clue. So I think I wore me ons mm. and they just weren't the right choice of shoe 
at all. My feet were ripped apart. Um, but that was the first walk. So can I ask, was you posting on social media on that first yeah, walk? Yeah, yeah, Was yeah. you like so I've got, company? The way you... I've got pictures from literally my very first walk. There's yeah. my first walk from yeah. Southport. There. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's yeah. a, that so I, all... Must but, have been November because you're Tash. Ah, there yeah. Go. There we go. Yeah. Look at you paying attention to detail. And then second walk, I went and done Snowden. Mm. <laughs> done Snowden on my own. I've done all the three peaks on my own. I went and done. And that was another one, 18 miles of Formby. Yeah. Perfect day with the rainbow. Mm. Love that okay. picture. That's a good Absolutely one. Absolutely love that picture. Uh, and then I got invited to do a charity football match. Oh, yeah, I saw that. I saw that yeah. one, yeah. Because remember I, when... I think I got like 400 quid from that. Did you? In donations, yeah. Oh, that's sick. From that game. Um, did no. you play the game while no I didn't play up? the game oh, okay. I just went to I was a mascot <laughs> <laughs> I was the mascot <laughs> and then I went and done Scarfell it's sick you know and then Ben Nevis all three peaks minus eight degrees minus eight and uh, Bad, you must have been shriveled up oh I locked my phone fuck no uh, yeah um, what else from there right go ahead carry on full journey go ahead Um. And then that's when I went to do my Liverpool to Cambridge. Mm. Fucking hell. Cambridge, yeah. 174 mile. I mean, that's, how long is that in kilometres? Because if the 100k kilometre done you in, what's that in kilometres? No, but that was, the 100 kilometres was done in a day. Yeah, oh, okay. how long was that spread over for? Like, that was six me? days. Oh, six, oh okay, okay, okay. So that was like 30, 30 something mile a day. I think I did underachieve on some days as well because mm. it was absolutely finished. Mm. But I done... The walk of me Crocs. Cowboy boot Crocs. Cowboy boot Crocs? <laughs> what? Like comfy. Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Where are you staying when you're doing this? Or are you just so, paying for it yourself? So on that one, uh, for me, Liverpool to Cambridge, that was bed and breakfast. That was paid by me. Um, two, but for the first two days, because obviously I started in town and I wasn't too far away. My dad did come and pick me yeah, up, yeah. take me home and then drop me back off where I finished. Mm. But for me last, obviously me Tenerife when I camped, yeah, did you? So I camped for three weeks oh, around the that. island. Yeah. So everything that was carrying in my bag, obviously my tent, sleeping bag, my air bed, that was all extra weight. That's extreme. Food, clothes for when, like in the night time, for when I was obviously wearing in my speedos. Yeah. My bag was unbelievably heavy wow. to carry that. But I would literally, so I'd make sure I'd get somewhere for like eight, nine o'clock to set up. But obviously New Year's Eve, when I got there, oh, Absolutely unbelievable. So we got there New Year's Eve, yeah. straight in the airport, speedos on. In out, the airport? In the airport, <laughs> yeah. Walked out the airport, I had 14 miles to walk. Sick, man, you, you know. Absolutely, absolutely was everyone staying at you? Everyone was staying at me. Everybody was staying. Was you with your camera in that or not? Like, was you recording yourself? I've got, I've got all the highlights on me. Yeah, yeah. Right, that's yeah. So I literally get out the airport, okay, well, get to, get to land. Fucking get free passport, <laughs> go to the box, throw me speedos on, I'm out, walking out the airport. Everyone's like, wow, what the fuck's going on? It's not there. I had 14 miles to walk on the first day to get to Las Americas. Yeah. So I walked. Took me, fucking hell, it took me a while, actually. I think that took me about six or seven hours because uh, all the terrain I was walking, you on your there was own? no path, all on my own. There was no path. Uh, it was getting dark. Couldn't see where I was going. Get there eventually. I think I got there for like nine o'clock. Went to a coffee shop, got loads of weed. First thing. <laughs> yeah. That was the first thing on my Priorities. mind. Priorities. That was the first thing on my Cause mind. I was like, as soon as I get to Las Americas, I need a fucking weed. Yeah. Get that was the weed. motivation to get yeah. you through. Yeah, when I got there, he gave me like 20 grand for nothing. Shut up. Because I told him what I was doing. He's like, yo, you're going to need some weed to walk yeah. around. And he was like, yeah. yeah. Shut up. I was like, I don't know. But then I, I went there, had a few splits there. And then I stood up. And I knew where I was staying. Even before I was going, I knew where I wanted to stay. Because yeah. obviously in Tenerife, I've been a few times. And there's this mountain where Los Chris is on your left and Las Americas is on your right. Yeah. And I thought, if I can get up that mountain before midnight, I'll get up there to see all the fireworks at midnight. Oh, sick. The yeah. New Year's. Yeah. So I went all the way there, lad, and I got there. Yeah, look at this. Oh, absolutely unbelievable, you know. Why do you have to send us the videos? I will. I'll, send, I'll send you them on. Oh yeah, watch when it turns to Las Americas now though. Well, there's Los Chris. Loads of people were up there as well. Oh, that's camp up there. They camped up there, yeah. like yeah, look, three sixty degree view, yeah. fireworks everywhere. Sick. There's me tent here, look. That's where. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. But then that was that was literally me for three weeks. Then 
I was fucking sometimes waking up on the beach and everything, just sleeping on the beach. And it's a good movement what you're doing, you know. Like, yeah. I, I, like it's not just even Liverpool. You're breaching out of like UK. You're breaching out of like the north. You're breaching out to like countries. Yeah, that's what I mean. Well, I went to Amsterdam and done a marathon around yeah. Amsterdam and my speedos. Did, yeah. When was that? Uh, that was in December. <laughs> Lad. Did you walk wow. past um, all the bed and read like this? Yeah. And it was like, do you want to run me instead? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> nah, but, like, obviously, like, it is sick. And I, I've, I've seen you on socials, I've seen you, but I've never really understood the mute. Yeah. I've never what, what, heard what your story. Yeah, like, yeah. the big nasty and all this, and like, you're Tenerife and do you know what I mean? So it's, it's good to hear it, innit? You know, you you're going to obviously, a, a lot of people are going to hear your story as well. And like, I reckon it does motivate lads to think you know what there is more things out there than just like Sounds the nice. the day-to-day rap race or yeah do you know what i mean there's you can actually just put you on your speedos and go for a walk you can live do you know what yeah. i mean it's you can actually live and people don't realize yeah, like doing yeah, yeah. something as simple as that yeah like obviously I, all the the main reason i do i see speed on me he's the main reason why i do all this i seen how much he raised he, mm. he obviously raised a million pound in six years or nine six or nine years i think yeah. it was and there's Something as simple as bang, speedos on, go and walk and raise awareness. And it just, it just baffles my mind. It really does baffle my mind. But I've had, pe- I've had people now saying, oh, fucking, uh, oh, speedo mix done this, speedo mix. And I'm like, and what if he's done this? Uh-huh. Like, what if- why does that matter if, if someone else has yeah. already went and done that? Yeah. I, I'm getting out there, I'm raising awareness, and I'm also raising money. Why are you giving me shit? Yeah. A positive thing, isn't it? What, like, what, what have you got to give me shit for? Yeah. I'm out here, I'm literally putting my body through absolute torture. Yeah, I am, and it, it hurts, yeah. it hurts a lot. My body feels like I don't think I'll have knees by the age of 40. I mm-hmm. really don't, I genuinely don't, with how I feel. And I feel like, how can you sit there and give me any kind of shit? Like, so, some I don't know if you've seen when I said on, on yeah, what's happening yeah. about that fella who messaged me calling yeah. me an embarrassment and saying speed or me could be disappointed or something like that. I was thinking, I'm out there doing a good fucking thing. What are you doing? Exactly. <laughs> Sat there on his couch at fucking six o'clock in the morning giving me shit on Instagram. <laughs> you know what it kind of reminds me of, yeah? Like, I've just had a thought then. You know, like, everyone's doing the ice uh, challenges where you get in the bucket of ice yeah, and stuff. Yeah. Obviously, yeah, it's not for everyone. No. Yeah, Do you know no. what I mean? I'm, like, not everyone's going to get in an ice bath. Not everyone's going to, like, put on a pair of speedos and yeah. go walking or nothing. But... It, that is for certain people like that. It, like, no, I it imagine it's yeah, a kind of big, a bit of a trend. Just put yeah. a speedo mick, don't it? Literally. And what? Well, like, I've, as I that, said, I've had, I've had loads of me mates who have came out and me and like, like, you know what? Fuck it, I'll I'd, come and do it with you. I've been having this combo, I'm Sorry. thinking, I might get a pair of speedos. <laughs> 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 I'll, come and, I'll come and float with you, lad. You know what I want? I'm you serious. Know, I, I, honestly, this is what I want eventually, yeah. I want to get a, a team, big, massive a group. T- yeah, yeah, lad, yeah, yeah. I want a massive group of speedo Start walkers. the movement, lad. Yeah. Speedo yeah. movement. Literally. <laughs> and, that, and that, when I went to that retreat the other day, that yeah. was the biggest group I've had so far. How many people did they? I think there was... I think there was 15 of us. Wow, dear. All yeah. in speedos or 15 and then like, a couple yeah. in speedos? There was 15 <laughs> and then I think there was like nine in speedos. Yeah. Still though. Still though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's like the biggest I've had. Like that's the biggest turn I've had of like, people you know, all in the same place. Could be a good idea. Like maybe doing something like a like a social event. Like we were talking about that big walk. That's what I want to do. Maybe set up like a thing where we're like, look, in three months time, this is where we're going. People get on board. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe. Do something big, See what happens like a big event. I don't that, know. I, no, that is genuinely something that I want to do. I really? want to get all like-minded people who want to come and push themselves. Who want to goal, step out the comfort zone. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like that—that that is something that I really want to do, and that's what I'm trying to push towards. Like if I can just get a big group of people, like like the lads who fucking came and spoke freely. Yeah. If anyone wants to come and speak freely and and step out of the comfort zone sure, and push that. themselves and give themselves a challenge and. Just to be with people who they know aren't going to judge them. Fucking come along. Mm. I mean, come along. Come and do something with me. Mm. I'm not going to fucking judge no one. Mm. And the lads who come out with me and do these walks aren't going to fucking judge no one because they're all like-minded people. Yeah. They're all the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've all had their own problems. They don't need to go out there and fucking judge other people. And if any if anyone at all wants to come along, any fucking disabilities, anything, get, get yourself down. Come and talk. Come and fucking push yourself to the max. I love I, that. I love it. Yeah. I fucking love it. How did he get involved? Speed on man walks on Instagram, drop me a DM. <laughs> I answer, sorry, he's like, I answer all DMs. <laughs> I thought he was so sorry. <laughs> I thought he was like, let me talk. Yeah. 
No, I'm sorry, lad. Get involved. Don't no, quit. Your question. Hey, go on, don't Don't your question. Go ahead. Go. Go. Yeah. Well, How do people get involved? Uh, be that man walks. I'm going to ask that to all the time. See, he's not even on the edge of his seat like that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bro. <laughs> Just drop me a DM. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I, I answer all my DMs. I do. It doesn't. It- <laughs> it took him about a good three weeks it to reply did. to me. Sorry, but I just got lost. He's on a walk. You know what, though? I do reply to everyone. I you do, do. But I get a lot of messages. Mm. And it, it's something that I've, I've never had before. I'm not used to it. But, like, some. Like, it's mad. It is mad. There'll be messages on there that I still haven't got round to, but I will get round to all of them mm. at some point. It's just some, like, some days I just can't be asked to touch my phone. You know what I mean? Mm. But I. Because I, a, lot of, a lot of the messages that I get are people who, who say they are struggling in that. And like, do you want to have a conversation and ask me how can I can I fucking give them any advice in any single way? And I, I make sure that I do get back to them all mm-hmm. because as I, as I said to you before, like I like people to be happy because when I make someone else happy or cheer someone else up, that boosts me. Mm-hmm. And if I can even just have that little five minute conversation with someone over the text message just to make them feel that little bit better about themselves or anything, then I'm, I'm willing to take all my time to do that. Yeah, Because like every smile that you get, every bit of happiness is 1% more it towards is. you, lad, and just build you more and more and more. 100% builds lad. my character even uh, more. Mm. So if you have to think about when you're saying about like what you want, do you already have a vision of the plan that you want to do with the people? So where you're going to go, how many people, everyone's going to be in speedos, what it, have you got like an idea of what you want? Because if you can talk about it or say it out loud now, you've already took the first step and in putting into place. It's going to take me a while to get as many, the, uh, the amount of people that I want to get. Okay, how but many a, people? A thousand people. A thousand people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Also being a pair of speedos marching somewhere. Mm-hmm. And just pool or something on a big mad walk. <laughs> anywhere, yeah. Yeah, absolutely anywhere. Imagine you just going about your day, you're in your car and you see a thousand people in yeah. speedos walking down the road. Yeah. A thousand people. Like think about it, like, and think about how happy that would make you. You'd think, "What? I am never going to see this again in my lifetime." Mm. Like it's it's a one in a lifetime experience to see that, but it might not be because that a thousand people might then turn to two thousand people, and like as it gets bigger and bigger. But I just want a big community of speedo walkers. Really, mm. I love doing it on my own. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely love it. I just bang my headphones in. I will bang one headphone in for when people are talking to me, and that I get stopped a lot. Yeah, but I need my music. I need to listen to some feel good music to get me to get me through it. Sometimes I take me speaker actually, I do, and I just bang me tunes out. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, that reminds me of that. Me neighbour Ray when he used to always go around on his bike. He used to fly around his bike lad with a speaker on his back, blasting like big reggae. Box. <laughs> yeah, like, that's shit. like me in my backpack lad. I yeah. had my big portable speaker and I just boom. What boom. music yeah. you listen to? You know what? I, I listen to a lot of James Morrison. James Morrison. James yeah. Morrison. Yeah, James Morrison's like yeah. my go-to person. And you know what? I'm not even gonna lie. Teddy swims. Is the album that he brought out uh, the other month? I've had one of his songs on it on repeat for like the last three days now. Mm. And everyone who's been with me is like, Are you still listening to that song? I'm like, yeah. Do you get like obsessed with certain songs and stuff? I, I'll because I'll do that. Song. I'll, I'll play it, play it, play it until I'm sick of it. Because we're stoners. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why. Honestly, I get like obsessed with the song. This and is what I'm like with this. Till the next one comes. <laughs> and then and then you forget about it and you put a random shuffle on and two years down the line like, the song oh comes on. You're like, god. oh my god, I remember this song. And then you're back on it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll listen to this for another 16 days. Yeah. <laughs> Spotify is like, give it a rest, lad. <laughs> it's fucking two years old. <laughs> Jeff and you'd ever be able to accomplish um, like a national speed all day? Like, yes. a, like, a, like a calendar thing? 100%. Yeah. Speaking of calendars, oh, I've got an idea. Is it going to be you in Speedos? It's going to be me Oof. in a Speedo calendar, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. All profits go to the charity. Like we've yeah. got enough cameras near that you can set up little photo mm. shoots. I want to do it. I want to do it in a barn. <laughs> in a <laughs> On hay bales. <laughs> Sounds sick, like. I want to do it. In my croc cowboy boots and my cowboy hat and yeah. my bandana around my neck. Uh-huh. Mm. Well, where did the cowboy hat come from? I don't know. Just I had it in my cupboard <laughs> from Australia. From when, from, it, it's from Australia from when I was like 12. Yeah. And it was just in my cupboard. And I thought, and I'd never touched it ever. And I thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to be a speedo cowboy and fuck it. Just do it. And I'd done it. And now I'm here. Yeah. That's sick. Oh. That, that, and now it's just my whole character. Yeah. yeah. It's weird. But I love it. Mm. I wouldn't have it any other way. I, loved, I love it completely. The whole outfit is sick. It is, like, to be fair. The crocs are. It's the hairy chest that makes the hairy chest. The (laughs) The big doormat. Why do you go everywhere in your Crocs? Everywhere, apart from here today. Uh, 
But yeah. my Crocs have got serious miles. mileage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Goggins, ma- Goggins style serious mileage. Serious <laughs> mileage. They're, they're at the point now. Do you know what happened to me when I was on my 100k walk as well? Because the bottoms of them are that worn down now because I've worn them that much. I stood on a nail and it went through my croc into my toe. So I And that was literally two mile in. So I had to walk the rest, the extra 60 mile. Pulled it out, like, obviously. Yeah. But I had to walk with, with a, a hole in my toe or blood. Yeah. Is that, correct me if I'm wrong, was that the video where you're getting in the bath and your toes all cut? No, this was no. from my 100k walk the other day. Oh, sorry. sorry that, yeah. That's literally yeah. happened. So I had 60 mile ahead of me still with a fucking hole in my toe. Love then when I, when I took me when I took me fucking <laughs> sock off after it like and looked at it, it weren't too bad. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It was just all like... crusty and that. But <laughs> crusty. <laughs> Blood, sweat, and tears, lad, didn't it? My feet uh, are fucked. Blood, uh, sweat, and tears. Uh, my feet are a disgrace. Yeah. Oh, they're a disgrace. I'm not surprised. It, lad. It's embarrassing. Like I'm at the point now where I just keep my socks on if I went swimming. <laughs> Really, yeah. Nah, yeah. Am I yeah. <laughs> sleeping in your socks and that? <laughs> nah, it could never be me. That I'd fucking get my toes on. Okay, yeah. right. Okay. I couldn't give a fuck what they look like. <laughs> are you on to Goggins, lad? Where he's on about he, he goes to that many runs and that, lad. His, his feet have started to like yes. curl under, lad. Yeah. And I'm like, what? Imagine your feet curl under. He's adapted. Yeah. So his body's Goggins adapted to so what he's doing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's a different kettle of fish. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's going to carry the boats. Yeah. <laughs> Me eventually. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Your crocs will go away, <laughs> yeah. How far, like, in terms of farming mean, and age, how long do you reckon you'll be doing this for, though? Because what you say. How saying, long do I think I'll be doing this for? Yeah. I've said it a million times before, I don't see myself ever stopping. Really? Ever. If Because with the money I've raised so far, if I can carry on that pace for the rest of my life, just think about like, And as it builds and builds and builds up, like, I start getting more attention, more people notice me, more people donate, I've got a wider audience. Like, the sky is literally the limit with how much I could raise. Mm. And I enjoy what I'm doing. So for me to get out there and do that, it is nothing to me because that I see that as like my ideal day now to go and do a fucking a marathon walk and me speedos because that's how much I enjoy it. Mm. And while I'm raising awareness and money at the same time. So I genuinely don't see myself stopping. Mm. Not Love at that. all. Maybe... 65 when I'm a pensioner. I <laughs> reckon you keep going, yeah. lad, and just have like a nice little saggy body. Could do. Whether your speedos and all that on stuff. Yeah. But like, genuinely, I don't see myself stopping at all. Mm. I've got no vision of any end date up to now. Have you got like an ultimate co-worker that you'd want to do it with? Like, it would be the pinnacle person that could be stood next to you in a pair of speedos. Like Margot Robbie or something. <laughs> I've met Margot Robbie. Should Fuck off. I've actually, I've actually had Margot Robbie right in front of me. At a Birds of Prey here, premiere in LA. Is there anyone there? there bro. Will Smith yeah. was there as well. You and McGregor as well. What the? Why were, why were you there? Fucking, we were walking down the Hollywood Boulevard. You were walking? Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> this is another in between us story. Like, it's always walking down the fucking Hollywood Boulevard. <laughs> we were walking down the Hollywood Boulevard, though. This was and Mark and Robbie on the table over there. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. I that over a star. <laughs> but it was bad. It was yeah, we we had, uh, we walked down the Hollywood Boulevard years ago. Yeah, uh, with two two of my mates. Oh no, it was only one of my mates at the time. He, he, David never came that time. And um they were setting it all up. Mm. And we said to one of the fellas, we were like, What's going on here? And he's like, in two days, Margot Robbie and Will Smith are gonna be here doing the uh, premiere for Birds of Prey. It's like, how do we get in? He's like, you, you don't have to pay, you just walk in, you can cut like anyone can come. It was on because it was on the Hollywood Boulevard, and we just went there two days later. Got all fucking videos of walking out and that on my phone. There, yeah, it was mad, absolutely mad. But who's the person that I would rat having a pair of speedos next to me? Yeah, anyone. That is a good, good question. Um, I can't think. Mm. I honestly can't think. The person who right now who I would love to do a walk with is Russell Cook. Really? Mm. Oh, cool. I've seen him. The one who's, who's run, the one who's running the entire length of Africa. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah. Mm. How far is he into that? Do you know? He's got, I think he's got like fucking four days, uh, like 10, 12 days left, something like that. He's, he's nearly done. Yeah. But I feel like going on a walk with him, I'd learn so much. I just want to hear all about his story. Like this, I guarantee you now he has got the best story ever about this trip from Africa. Mm. The stuff he's seen, the shit he's been through. Like, but funny enough, he put something up on his Instagram before 
saying, um, I need to, e- I want to email him when I get out of here, to be honest. <laughs> so hopefully, <laughs> hopefully get in there because he's put something on. Um, he put, if you, about his finishing date is, so he, he put something on here, his last post that he put on Instagram about him getting closer. And he put, we've booked a hotel on nearby town between the 6th and the 9th of April. So that's when he's finishing. Mm. And he's put his email. He's like, if you want to come and be part of us with this, with us, just email with a photo of your passport and flights, travel confirmation, and we will sort your accommodation for free as a thank you for everyone's immense support. So that's for the opportunity to go and do his last few days with him mm. of his walk. So that's something that I'm definitely going to be emailing them when I yeah. walk out this room. I literally seen it when I was walking back from the shop. I was like, oh my God, no fucking way. I need to be in Africa in my speedos with Russ. I was going to say, like, I'm, imagine like you'd done what he'd done, obviously, be us just walking, but you walked the full length of Africa. He was doing like 50k a day. 50k <sighs> running a day. I can't like, even like one man on the street like without starting getting a bit of huff and a puff For that on. many days. He's 342 days in, he is. How much? How? 342 days he's been running for. So he's done a full year of running mm-hmm. every 50k a day? Yeah. Is that like the full parameter of Africa? The, the whole length. Up just and up down. and down, yeah. Uh-huh. Wow, that's mad. That, mm. you know, Africa's like... He's been robbed. bigger than what you think, isn't he? He's it, been really? robbed at gunpoint. He's had his van. Like, so he's got a camera crew that go around with him in a van. Yeah. And obviously where he sleeps in that. The van got robbed. All the camera equipment got robbed. What? He's been held at gunpoint. Yeah. He's had to, he had to get someone donated him a new van over there. Bought him a new van and all new camera equipment for him. Yeah. He's had fucking mad interactions with all wild animals and shit. He's been pissing blood, fucking shitting blood, running while he's shitting, <laughs> shitting down his leg yeah. while that, he's running. That's but, like what Goggin, that's Goggin's yeah, like that level. That is dedication shit. Yeah. That is dedication. Wow. And he's literally just, hi guys, yeah, fucking 42 kilometers in. Where is he from? Got shit down my leg. And that's what he's just like. And he literally shows himself, lad, and he's got shit running down his oh. leg. I don't know where he's from. Is he he's from the UK somewhere though, yeah. He's from the UK somewhere though, but I don't know where he's from. But Ali Law went and done some of his run with him, didn't he? Yeah. Mm. yeah. While he was in Africa towards the start, yeah. Isn't that isn't Adam Rowe doing something like a run in Africa soon? I don't know. Or like next year? I don't know. Sure, don't Adam know. Rowe's doing something like I that. I seen him the other day and I fucking hate myself for not coming over to say something. Hi mate, get me on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> he walked right past me in town and I looked at him and went, That's Adam Rowe. Should I go and ask him about the podcast? I was like Nah, I shouldn't. Uh, and then five minutes later, I was like, "Opportunity." That's an opportunity. But yeah. social media, like power up social media, didn't it? Mm. I know. messaged him. Didn't answer it. Uh, yeah. Didn't open it. Oh. Yeah, so I remember I saw him on a walk the other week when uh, my bird and Ryan Sefton, and we saw him running. So obviously he's been training. Yeah. Lad, he was goosed. Was he, he was redder than that chair. Like, sat down. <laughs> like, sat down. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, I want to go home. And go, right, lad. Got to start <laughs> somewhere, though. Yeah. yeah. Always got to start yeah. somewhere, well, lads. I wouldn't start. So, like, I can always give me hats off them. Like, Have you yeah. seen the fella who's in fucking Kilimanjaro now? But he's got to be the first person ever to walk Kilimanjaro with a fucking fridge on his back. What? He's got a fridge on his back. Started. No. The, I think he started the other day. Got this. Any guesses on what his name is? Fridge on my back. Speed on man. The fridge man. The fridge man. <laughs> 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 He's either just started it or he starts it in a few days. He's in Africa now though. How the hell? Mike Copeland. Lad, he's actually got like a genuine like proper fridge on his back. Yeah. Oh. But he does it. He, 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 he does his work well. for mind as well. So Lad, it's like a proper mini fridge, I but like a bit mind. bigger. Yeah, like it's a decent charge. Mm. I rate him highly, to be honest, bro, because yeah. he's fucking, he's put some mileage in with that fridge on his back, like, Jesus. But is it, like, it's mad, don't it? Like, you, you're the first person that, like, I kind of come across, besides, obviously, Speedo Mick, everyone knows him, but you're, like, the first person I've kind of come across that's doing this stuff. Yeah. But then you talk about that Russell lad who's running in Africa, you're talking about yeah. the fridge man now. I just got me, like, before you know, it's got me a handful, like, a proper handful of people that are just doing Fund all this raises, stuff. Yeah. Just big fundraisers. And then you still get people going out to town getting pissed on mm. on the weekend because that's fun. Yeah. Sorry, I had to, like, throw, sh- <laughs> I had to throw shade there, right? Not to me. You know, uh, you're smashing it, lad. Like, obviously, you know what I mean? You, you've leveled up on that. You're, no, yeah. like, 100%. I have, like, if someone told me I was going to be in this position that I'm in right now a few years ago, I would have said, fucking get to fuck. Yeah. You know what I mean? I would have said, get to fuck. But I've put the work in. And as I said, I just want to get a platform to just speak to people mm. and just... If people can just see me smiling and speaking, then there's no reason to why they can't. And as I said, if anyone wants to message me and 
drop me a DM about how they're feeling or anything. I will make sure that I get back to everyone. Mm. If there's any any advice I can give them or anything, I will make sure that I, I reply to every single fucking DM. Yeah. That I guess. That's your phone's gonna be blown up. I don't man. care. I really yeah. don't care. I just want I just want to be able to have little interactions with people because it does better yourself when you hear other people's stories. I really do believe that. Mm. And even just from being in that room at the the retreat the other day. And then everyone's like came out of there and I was thinking, wow, like we were everyone was just so refreshed and energized after it because they'd got everything they needed to get off the chest. And it's just like a big sigh of relief. Like, ah, oh. you could see most of the people in that room have been bottling that in for years. Mm-hmm. And for them to just sit in that room there, yeah, some of them was under pressure, but they still came out, they still pulled through and said it. And and just seeing the looks on the faces after they got it out, or oh, everyone was smiling. Mm-hmm. Everyone was smiling. Well, growth comes from pressure. Does. Like when you're under pressure, like that's got where, to do shit you don't yeah. want to do. So being able to be in that position is actually a bit of a blessing. I did not want to get out there and put my speedos on for that first walk. Uh-huh. The weather was shit. I looked outside. I was like, call it off. I'm not doing it. I, c- I can't be asked. But I thought, if I do this now, what kind of person does that make me? Mm. I've set up a fundraiser. People have donated to the charity in hope that I'm going to go and do this walk. I am doing this walk. And now the weather doesn't bother me. I'll get out there, even if it's fucking torrential fucking storms, whatever, I'll go out there in my fucking speedos because I've said, this is what I'm doing. I am not backing down. Mm. I'm raising money. I'm, like, I've am like i got a lot on my shoulders, do you know what I mean? Like, I can't look like a pussy. I need to get out there and do what I've said I'm going to do. And so far, nothing's came in the way of that. Like, uh, Have you ever spoke about from when you were 17, 18, up until your first war, that time part of your life? From when from seventeen to the first war, yeah, like my first, yeah. So obviously everyone knows about the first war from October, from November that you've done. Did we speak about it before the mental institution? Yeah, but that that was off camera. Or was it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So just take us. So I feel like take us through because I don't know if you ever spoke about it. Like when you were eighteen, seventeen, eighteen, but then nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. Who who was Elliot then? Elliot was fucking a nobody. Uh-huh. Literally, Elliot was. But that's what I felt like at the time. But now looking back, I know, like, with, with the mentality I've got now, and I can see I was being silly. Mm. It was all stupid. It was all just my mind playing games with me. But I used to think of myself as a nobody. And as I said, I, I would hurt myself. I would punish myself all the time for not being up to scratch, not being up to standards, and just feeling like I weren't good enough to even roam the earth. I feel like I had no purpose. And hence why I was thinking, do I want to wake up every single day and feel like shit and think, why the fuck am I here? And to be honest, I used to hate me mum for thinking, why the fuck have you brought me into this world? Mm. Like, why? Like, I, this isn't the life I want to live. I don't want to be this person. And as hard as it was, like, I did put me mum and dad through a lot of shit when I was younger. Because I think it's like, because obviously they were there for me and they cared and they, they knew something was going on. <clears throat> but I would always push them away because I didn't want them to get involved with it. It was my battle. I felt how I felt. And at that time, I believed there's nobody in this world who is going to make me feel better. No one's going to heal me. If my mum and dad can't make me feel better, who the fuck is? Mm-hmm. So I felt like I was alone. And I was pushing off the track. Fucking, I came out of work at the time as well for my journey, like step back from it. Because I think that that was around the time I took my first overdose. And I was out of work for a while, like just trying to sort shit out, trying to sort me out. I was obviously in and out of hospital and stuff. And then it got to a point where it was like, fuck it. Like, you need to be sectioned. You're not safe to be out. And at the time, I was thinking, wow, what the fuck? Like, my life, this is my life. I'm getting sent to a fucking, like, a mental asylum. And I was in there in Broad Oak. Fucking pills, locked in my room, not allowed to see daylight, not allowed fresh air. Because literally, it'd get, like, you'd get woke up six o'clock in the morning, take your meds, and then you'd be doing arts and crafts and shit like that. And like, it was just like, I felt like I was just getting brainwashed and it weren't making me any better. And I was getting forced to take medication. If you didn't take your meds, you'd inject your meds into you. You'd have no, you'd have no choice. If they prescribed you with medication that you needed to take while you were in there, there's no way you're getting away without taking it. Whether you swallow it or whether it goes in your fucking ass, you're taking that tablet. And 
you'd get fucking locked up in your room. I think it was nine o'clock at night. You'd get put in your room and locked away and then that's it. And for me, like, to get out, I got out of there. When I got out of there, they were like, yeah, fucking we feel you're okay to go. Um, got discharged after a few months. Um, and then when I came out of there, it was just like, what did I learn from that? I didn't learn anything. I learned how to fucking spend time with a lot of aggressive people who have got drug problems. Because most of the people who were in there have got drug problems. And like, I didn't belong in there. Because the place that they put me was like, I wouldn't really call it a mental health ward. It was more like a fucking, there, there was absolute nutters in there. Like nutters. And one of the fellas who was in there had done murder as well. Like he'd, pre- he'd done previous murder. He'd been arrested and came out of prison and fucking got sent into there. Mm. So it was like, why am I in here? Like, what have, what have I done? Anything on that level? Yeah, I tried to fucking top myself a few times. So why am I now in here with fucking murderers and fucking like crackheads and shit like that? Like, it was, it was, a, it was a scary place. Mm. It was fucking like a terrifying place, to be honest with you. And it like made me worse when I got out of there. Didn't learn anything for the outside world. I didn't learn how to cope with anything. It was literally just forcing medication down my mouth, which they expected me to carry on taking when I got out of there. But I never I fucking got off them. Um, and from there, it was literally just being a constant battle where I didn't know what I wanted to do with myself. And it wasn't until it was last year, uh, the start of last year, where I took an overdose again because I still weren't happy. When rounds was that? 2023, the start of the year. Start of the year. Start of 2023. Um, and I just, I was like, fuck it, like, just end it all now, get away from everything. Um, and I actually went to a car park fucking didn't tell no one anything. Um, went to a car park out the way, load, went to the shop, bought a load of tablets, I found some tablets in the house. Um, and I just munched and munched and munched and munched. Just sat there fucking constantly being sick out the door, sick all over myself. Um, but still after being sick, I'm still forcing tablets down my mouth. Still just sweating, felt every sweating out of me. And then I just got to a point where I thought, just gonna close my eyes. Fucking, I feel like I've done enough tablets there. Fucking, so many, so many tablets. I thought that's it. That's enough. Close my eyes. I could just feel myself going. You know what I mean? I could feel it all. Fucking, yeah. Um, just felt myself going, and then next minute, fucking, like I can remember just the police car pulling up with uh, two women. Could not see them. I could literally, my eyes were that blurry. I couldn't see. I could just see the high visits. And uh, just asking me questions, fucking got me transported to an hospital. And I was in there for, fucking, I think I was, I was, I had a uh, drip. I forgot to check. How long was I there for? I was in and out. It wasn't a long one. I can't really remember anything that went from the hospital because I was so fucked and I was just, I had that many tablets inside me. I just, it is really a blur, but I can remember sitting there on a chair with this drip just hanging out my arm and I couldn't move for I think it was like 19, 20 hours, something like that. And I literally, there was no way for me to move. Didn't have a bed, just sat on a chair watching this drip, just, just empty and flushing everything out of me. And from there, I knew, I, cause if I, if I didn't get found, if I didn't get found by the police, when they found me, I have no fucking idea how they found me, don't have a clue. But if I didn't get found by the police there and then, I would not be here right now. I would not be sat in this room right now. And that to me is, I believe, I believe in faith, like strongly believe in faith. And I believe that is faith. For me to still, for me to be here, for them to find me in that car park, the car park was so remote, no street lights or nothing. Like I'd been there before, I'd been in that car park before. And I know no one ever goes there. So for them to drive in at that time, I think it was like 11, 12 o'clock, midnight. For them to drive in there at that time and find me there, like I, I tr- truly do believe that that is what's given me my purpose to get out there and do what I'm doing. Because after, obviously after that, after I got found, after I got discharged from the hospital, then I went on to my counselling, went on to my therapy, um, got a little journal. Started to fill shit out in a journal day by day, which is something like that I'd never done before. 
because um, that's what my counsellor told me to do, get a journal, start writing your feelings down, look back at them, and you can reflect on how you felt on each day. So it's like sad. And um, I started learning then, because I'd never learned anything about mental health before that. Didn't, because as I said to you, I didn't want to think about it. But from that point when I went to counselling, and they broke me down bit by bit, um, just like fucking... Because I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I had, I had a team coming out to me to see me at my house as well. And they were coming out uh, twice a day. To fucking, like, that was like the, the mental health crisis team. But then that was just for me having someone to speak to. So like, I'd look forward to them coming around because then I could speak to them about how I'm feeling. Because I, I went through a, a time where I wouldn't leave the house. After that happened, I just wouldn't leave the house. Wasn't going into work. Took time off work. Because um, I just weren't me. I obviously I'd struggled before and in the past, but this time it was like, this is it. This is what needs to be done. I need to make a change in my life. And from there is when I started fucking doing all this because the counsellor said to me, find something you really enjoy doing and get out there and do it. No matter how you feel, make that change. Push yourself, push yourself out your comfort zone. So I was like, sad and because that's someone who i trusted at that time last year because she was there for me i felt like she really was there for me and she really did understand me so i was like sad i'll give it a go i'll go and do it and she even said to me why don't you go out there and raise money for your cause for how you feel because she's like i know how passionate you feel about it why don't you go out there because i was saying to her like it's always men this is what I, this was the main thing for me i was like why is it always us men that seem to suffer the most and she was like, because she, obviously she, from a girl's point of view, and she was like, because us girls gossip, she's like, we talk about all our problems. She's like, you don't. You just bottle it up over and over and over again until it comes to this. She's like, why don't you try and make a change? Why don't you try and get people to speak up? And she's like, do a fundraiser. Get out there for, for a charity, for a mental health charity. So I was like, you know what? That's what I'll do. And I got out there and done it. And now it was the best thing anyone could have ever said to me to do because the the enjoyment I get out of it and how proud I am of myself for pulling myself out of that deep hole it's like no one can do it you can't do it like you're the only person who can do it you know what I mean you're the only person who can pull yourself out of that rut no one else is going to do it for you people can speak to you over and over and over again and say the exact same thing shit say exact same shit you know how you feel uh, it'll be all right no one has a fucking clue but you and no one has the answer but you. You're only going to find that by going out there and pushing yourself to find it. It's not going to find you. You need to fucking find it. And I, I've found it. That's that's how I feel. Mad. Mad. It is mad. I am so fucking proud of you, you know. I'm so proud like, of your fucking self, man. I, I really did not am. expect that story to be coming from you. Like I said, the way that you are, and I know everyone says social media just highlights people's lives, but... You are a genuine lad and mm -hmm. you're doing this for a big cause. But like I said, I didn't think you were even coming on to talk about what happened to you. I yeah. thought you were coming on to talk about a cause. But like, lads, to go through what you've gone through. Mate, that's, that's heartwarming. It's heart touching, but it's scary. It is. And it, like I said, it shows that it can happen to anyone. It can. I was at a point where I, I literally, I would see red and nothing would ever pull me out of that. Once I'm in that state of mind, that's it. I, I need to hear myself. I need to do something to to take my mind off it. And that's what it was for me. If I'd cut myself, if I'd burn myself, if I'd fucking punch myself, the pain of that would take my mind away from what I was thinking because it would be focused on the pain. You need to sort the pain. So it would take my mind away, whether it was for an hour, two hours, whatever. My mind would fade away from what I was, what was really going on up there. So... Mm -hmm. It's a coping mechanism. That's what it, it is. Was. Like, it, it was a coping mechanism. Yeah, as like, bad as it is, because that's self harm, and lads, and like people think it is cutting, which you don't. But yeah. punching yourself, like being, it's self harm. It is. But that's also why people turn to drinks. That's why people turn to drugs. Yeah. Because it, it helps. That's all self harm. Yeah. It is like because it, it is. is damaging your body. Mm -hmm. That's all what that is. Just another method of self harm. Yeah. And then obviously they they do try and. Like what you're saying, they literally they force you to take your tablets. Yeah. And to this day, lad, I I take um fifty milligrams of sertraline, whatever it's called for antidepressants. I used to be on sertraline. Yeah. Um. But I I listened to this podcast yesterday. It was Joe Rogan and some woman. It was episode two thousand 
100 man or something like that. I don't know if anyone wants to watch it. It's fucking boss. <laughs> Get it out there, plug it. Yeah. <laughs> but the, Joe Rogan said, if you do exercise, it's like 1.25 times more effective than any antidepressant. Yeah. Than you is. do, but people will turn to tablets because it's going to help them. Literally. But like getting up and exercising and moving your body and changing the philosophy. I mean, this, whatever it is of your body, I can't remember the actual word because I'm on a rant. But getting up and moving, like, this is the, one of the biggest things. It's right? natural. Yeah. It's a natural yeah. antidepressant. Is that what you mean? Which? The serotonin. Yeah. So I, I, I I don't like the first Zoom podcast with a lad over in America. He's from Virginia and he's now a life coach, but you're onto Tony Robbins. Mm, yeah. No one's ever seen to be onto Tony I'm Robbins. Like I, I know you two are, but everyone has. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I am. Yeah. Yeah. Don't forget about me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Belton last night, lad. Yeah. Yeah. But Tony Robbins is like this motivational life coach and he, he's massive. I should get on him. But when people go to his, um, what would he say? Se- seminars. Seminars. Speaking events. Yeah, yeah speaking events. It, it, it would just be chairs like an assembly or whatever, yeah. like like one of them, just loads of chairs. But before they start, he gets everyone up and they all start dancing. But obviously everyone's going there with all like mental health issues or they're like they're feeling low or they don't know what to do. But he gets them up, gets them moving. And obviously that then can relate to a bigger picture of like going to the gym, playing football, going on walks, whatever it is, swimming. You've just reminded me of Yes Man so much there, the film yeah. with Jim Carrey. Yeah. Mm, that, but you can't say no. Yeah, with mm-hmm. the seminar that he, the fella, Re- and he gets everyone up dancing yeah. in there at the start. It was probably Tony Robbins. <laughs> <laughs> he really got the idea from him. He gets yeah. everyone up moving at the yeah. start, yeah. lad, and he's fucking like, he probably gets involved with everyone. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like that, yeah. So he gets everyone up, they start dancing and all that. And then I was like, why, why is he doing that? And he went, because when you're up and you're moving, you automatically, like chemistry wise in your body, you become happier. So yeah. then you're more open to taking in information and taking in like advice that people give to you. And then he said, you've never seen a sad person dancing before. Like I was like, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> but that's what it is. Like, like, it is, no, 100%. Get up and, and you need move. You need more shit like that in the world. And that's like, it's the most important message is to get out there and just go and do shit. Push yourself as far yeah. as you can. And I, I will I will always preach that because if I, didn't, if I didn't go and do all the shit that I'm doing now, I wouldn't be the way I am right now. Mm. And it, it literally just takes that. Get out there and fucking go and do it. If you tell yourself you're gonna do something, go and do it. Because you'll you if if you don't if you t- if you make plans and they fall through and you're like, oh fuck it, I can't be asked. It just weight it's just a big weight on your shoulders then. You know what I mean? Because you think, oh, maybe I should have went and done that. Mm. And you're constantly thinking about it. But then if you do go and do it, you think, you know what, fucking fair play. I've fucking smashed it. I've I've achieved something instead of dwelling on it that you mm. haven't fucking went and done it. Mm. Do you live a life with any regrets at all? Or do you regret what you went through? I No, I don't regret any Good. of it at all. Good. Because it would, it's all character building. Mm-hmm. And it, I would not be the person I am right now yeah. without going through what I've been through. So it I, is literally what makes you who you are yeah, today. exactly. So uh, I, don't, I don't regret absolutely anything in my life. No, mm-hmm. Nothing. Because every little choice, whether it's big or small, they all make an impact on how your life plays out. And... Where I am right now, I'm very, very happy. Very fucking happy. So to if any of them change if any of them chances could have been any slightly different or anything, it my different impact it could have had a completely different impact on my life. Um, so um no regrets. No. I, I love nothing. That, you know, I fucking love that. That's, I really do. It's um it's a story that even if it's one person, but it's a story that someone would tell someone another day. Yeah. And that 100%. could inspire them. And like, if that makes an impact on a person, that's, that's something that you've got to be proud Even of. Even if it's just it. one person, two person, whatever, as long as it can change anybody's life at all, I am happy. Mm. Do, you, do you find yourself trying to talk to like people close to you or anything like that and trying to make an impact on them? Now that I way? do, yeah. yeah. Now I do. Like, I've, as all my mates like that I've never heard anything years ago. Like I do speak very openly to them about it now. And I feel like sometimes they forget though. Because like it's just like normal life now. It's like it's set in, do you know what I mean? But like sometimes I do try and have like little deep conversations with them just to make them realise like like because a few of my mates as well, I try to push them, like to get them out of bad habits and shit, but they don't fucking listen to me. Dude. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> the fucking grown men. You can do their own fucking shit, do you know what I mean? But like I do try and break them out of bad habits sometimes, but and I've not yet succeeded. Mm. I'll get there one day. <laughs> I'll get there one day. Keep, keep positive. Lad. I'll get you know. there one day, lad. I will. Oh, lad, that's sick. That you know. Uh, but um, what's next then for Elliot, aka Spielman? So obviously we've got the walk on Sunday with Craig. 
Yeah. 26 you, mile. Where are you going? Where Don't know it? yet. Don't know. So this is the thing. He was, when I went, I didn't tell you before, did I? When no. I went for the walk with him in Sefton, he was like, where are we going then? I went, I don't know yet, Craig. Uh, he was like, when will you know? I was like, to be honest, I don't usually plan because I don't I don't really plan my walks. I'm very impulsive. Really? What? Well, with Tenerife, I, Tenerife was booked on like four or five days' notice. Just going to a walk like that. Yeah. Um, but like when I do my marathons and that, like I went out, I'd done a 13 hour shift in work, I finished work and I thought, fuck it, I'm going to throw my speedos on and go and do a night walk. So I went and walked Wells Mere Port in the night, got there at six o'clock in the morning. But that's just how impulsive I am. I literally finished a 13 hour shift and then went and done a fucking seven hour walk or whatever I'd done. <laughs> I drove to Ells Mere Port the other day, it took me 45 minutes. I was like, fuck that, never again. <laughs> <laughs> the day and back was like two hours. I was like, nah, I like, that's too far. That. And I walked there through the you fucking night. There in the middle the of the night. You know what? That was the maddest track. That was the maddest track. It took me through like a farmer's field, through all like the muddiest and puddles, my feet. That That's when my feet was, when I posted on my story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because of how wow. swamped he was. Crazy. But I said to Craig, I was like, I'm so impulsive, I probably won't get us a route until Saturday or Sunday mm. when we're actually going to do it. And he was like, ooh. I was like, well, it doesn't really matter, does it? Because we're doing 26 mile regardless. Yeah. It doesn't really matter whether we're going 26 mile that way or 26 yeah. mile that way. Mm. We're still getting the miles in. But I just don't tend to think of a location until the day before or the actual day of it, which is... <laughs> Weird, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I better, can you say to him, we don't even have Ruth, I'm just going to walk and just like look at your phone, like on the side. <laughs> Maybe all that, like, I don't know, I don't you know. know. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just walk till we've done 26 yeah. mile. <laughs> uh, that'd be funny, that, you know. Do you have um, like a little stops and that? Do you have like little breaks and that? Or Usually, no. No, just go. Just Once you go. start, you go. Yeah. That's it. I'll pre roll a few splits in the morning and I'm off. <laughs> 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 no, so what, what do you buy food? Just stop off food and that? Nah, so I usually have like, I'll take stuff in my bag, which is just like easily to eat. Yeah. But I've also, so I've got this girl, Jessie. Yeah. Uh, she messaged me a few weeks ago on Instagram saying like she loves what I'm doing and yeah. stuff. Yeah. And she, she does all food, like meal preps. Meal food preps and that, yeah. yeah. and she's been dropping me 15 meals off a week. Oh, nice. Every week. She drops really? them off. She drives 40 minutes every Sunday mm. to come and drop me 15 mm. meals off. Out she does. She she deserves it. You know, I've done one on me on my Instagram. Yeah. Because honestly, like, she never asked me for anything. She just said, like, I love what you're doing. I just want to help you out in any way I can. And she's obviously a uh, ways she makes all food prep. So she's mm. like, I'll sort you loads of meals. And she did you know what the fucking good. The good like, bang them in the microwave for two minutes. Oh. Preps by Jesse on Instagram. Preps by Jesse. Preps by Jesse, yeah. And uh, 65 quid for 15 meals a week. Yeah. Yeah. And but I like I think about it as well, like for the money that you spend on food, like you can go out there and you can get a Mackey's and you can pay a tenant on one fucking meal from Mackey's. Easily. Easily. Mm. Like fifteen quid for your fucking yeah. your, your cheese slap your cheese box and your fucking bear. Oh, your bear, like you're going thirty quid. Literally, literally, that's really good yeah. <laughs> but like these meals I think they work out at like four quid each and yeah. it's all good pro- high protein fucking it's, it's all goodness. Yeah, you know it's proper, it's proper good, good food. Yeah. yeah. And I love them and I appreciate it a lot. So that's a lot what I eat as well. That is pretty much all I eat when I'm at home as well. Yeah. You're not a nutritionist or anyone who looks at your diet or anything like that? No. Like, I'm getting looked at. I am, oh, lad, and I, I, no complaints at all. No no complaints from it. Love lad, it. I love that. You know, what, does, um, what does your man think of it? Like your heart, I fucking love it. Really? Absolutely love what I'm doing, yeah. What, what's like the best thing that they've said to you about it? I feel like they tried to give you like some like little cheesy line and you're like, stop it, but no, I love it. They, nah. they don't, you know, like, because I, I for me, I don't, I, I don't really see me mum and dad a lot mm. because I'm always out. Like, I'll yeah. get, I'll, if I'm in work, they'll be in work before me. I get, like, I'll go, I'll still be asleep when they're in, like, when they go to work. I go to work about eight o'clock. And then by the time I get home from work, because I work long hours, I'll go and see one of my mates for a bit. And then, they're in bed by the time I get home. Mm-hmm. So I don't really see them through the week. And then whenever I'm not in work, I'm always out doing something. But like after me walks, they'll always congratulate me. Oh, I'm so proud of you and shit like that. But they don't say no, no like cheesy shit. And no, that. I think they know not to though, because I'll be like, oh, fucking shut up. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't want to fucking hear that. <laughs> Just walked 100k. Yeah. Shut up, going to bed. My toes bleeding. Yeah. I've had a nail oh, in it. Yeah. Well, I need a bath. Are you run me bath? Where's the bubbles? 
that. I told me what I asked me once to run me a bath the other day when I finished me 100k walk. She's like, You've got legs. <laughs> like, you anymore. Fucking cheeky bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Come on, run me a bath, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Get a roast dinner on. Come on, get a roast these on. Were they like the biggest people supporting you when you were going through everything? 100%, yeah. Yeah. 100%. But I, when I was in the when I was in Broad Oak as well, like they were coming in to visit me and that. And I, I got to a point where I had to say to the staff, I don't want any visitors. Keep people away from me. If my mum and dad comes to the door, keep them away. Because I didn't want them to see me in that in that environment. With Because obviously when they'd come in and you was at, there was like a visiting table. So all the patients be sat on one side of the table and then you'd have your guests on the other side of the table. And I just did not want anybody close to me to come in and see me in the state I was in at that table with, with everyone. And I was just like, I, I couldn't cope. I was crying my eyes out. As much as I wanted to see people, I didn't at the same time. As I thought, it's only going to upset you and it's only going to upset me even more mm. knowing that I'm in here. You are out there living your fucking life and you you have had to come here to make sure that I'm okay. Like, let me get on with it on my own. I, I want to push myself. I want to focus on myself. And I want to just deal with it on my own. I want to break through so I can say I've done it all by myself. Mm. You know what I mean? Does that make sense to you? Like that, that's perfectly making sense. Yeah. And I fully understand that because I feel like if I was ever in that position, I wouldn't want any, like you said, I wouldn't want anyone to come and see me because yeah. I don't want them to see that version of exactly. Louis Donahue. I only like, want them to see the best version of me, yeah. which is the, the version... I currently am at right now is the best version I've ever been in my life. Mm. Yeah, hundred percent. And it's only going to get better. Oh, only going to get better. You're in the gym on that? No. No. Just no. pure, just walk and yeah, work. Just, just pure burning calories, lad. Yeah. Yeah. It's like just that. pure burning calories. I need to. I, you know what? I could do with getting back in the gym now because I could do with looking a bit better in the speed. I was like, <laughs> could, have, could have a few abs and a big chest in there. Could nice some biceps and that, but no. Nah, I'm not in the gym at the moment. I have a feeling like... A few poly ones. A few poly ones yeah. instead, yeah. like, yeah. yeah. I have a feeling if you went to the gym, like, you just jump on the treadmill. Probably that. Yeah. Yeah. Just walk. But you know what? Yeah. I said to myself, I want to go and do a 24-hour on a treadmill somewhere. Like a 24-hour fucking... Put a live fucking... camera on, lad. Put yeah. a live camera on. But then I was thinking, why would they go and do it on a treadmill when I can just go and do a 24-hour walk outside mm. somewhere and yeah. see mm -hmm. a different change of scenery? Yeah. But I think that's going to get put on hold for a while because after seeing how I was after walking for... 17 hours yeah. like yeah i'm gonna give that i need i definitely need more training before i go and do that like mm. that really did humble me because of course i'm invincible i am the number one walker in this world no one's got nothing on me i am the ghost do you know what i mean and then i go on this 100k walk i'm like a humble <laughs> i was like yeah i'm not i'm not what i make out to be <laughs> sometimes well, you probably need that isn't it nah, 100 like, yeah. saying it ain't about how hard you get knocked yeah. down <laughs> Bro, I definitely needed it. Yeah. I definitely needed it, lad. Because uh, yeah. I was running away with my thoughts. I was like, what? <laughs> I, I reckon I could fucking do a lap of every country right now. Australia, yeah. get me there. Th that's what I was telling myself. I was like, what? 14,000 miles around Australia? <laughs> fucking book me a flight. <laughs> 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 but yeah, oh, yeah. I, need, I did need uh, it. I did need it, lad. But I, that, that just pushed me even more to fucking train even more, though. Because yeah. I've realised, yeah, fucking maybe me knee can't take that kind of distance, but... I can push myself to make sure it can push mm. do that, that that type of distance Definitely. like Definitely. Mm. it's all training isn't it that's that, trial that's all what it is all what it is, trial and error. Error. All what it is. Like just mm. do mobility training all you need to do mobility I'm definitely going to do something like uh, definitely because I want to just I want to be able to go and fucking like maybe one day go and do a whole lap of yeah. Australia probably take a year and a half but I'll, I'll do that mm. I'll do that go and fucking spread awareness all around Australia and let yeah. the people of Australia fucking know what's going on yeah. <laughs> let the Aussies know what, what's <laughs> the Australians love me and me yeah, fucking speed yeah. hours, you know yeah they're like fucking natural clothes over there aren't they yeah. mm. day to day wear yeah love that well that's where you're getting your thousand people then over there like yeah. Yeah. We all yeah. going to Australia then, Come like, on, yeah. let's get a ball. do it, lad. Make sure you take a year yeah. and a half off work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Swear that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fuck that up. <laughs> so, I don't feel like I've got anything more like to, to speak about, you know. I feel like we've touched up on everything. I feel like we have. Yeah, yeah, I feel like otherwise we're just going to be rambling on mm, then for the sake yeah. of it. And we played the Manx in an hour and a half and I want to yeah. be make sure I'm on the couch ready for it. Yeah, so to nice. spank them. Uh, have you got any questions? Oh, good, yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. That's, uh, that's up there. That's up there. That's a good one. That I feel like, like, 
every episode we're doing at the minute, especially the last couple of ones, they're all getting better and they're yeah. doing more of what we're doing. But like this one today, lad, that's a proper Hall of Famer so far. Thank you very it much. is, lads. Like- it's a Hall of Famer, like, because you've came on and you've spoke about everything that what we're about. So yeah. the shit that you've gone through, but you've overcome it. You've yeah. been open about it. And then you've also been honest about what we, like your trajectory going yeah. forward. But it's also our thing is like, what makes us who we are today? And you literally said that phrase. Literally. Like, it's just, it's everything, lads. And we've had a laugh. We've got deep. Even though we've been honest. Flapping yeah. at the start. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's lad. You know what? I've loved it. Uh, yeah. Lad, it's been, been an absolute belter. Um, yeah. honestly, though, like, do you have yeah. any questions for us? No, that's no. it. Well, honestly. Do you have any message for anyone? As I said, fucking get out there and do it. If you tell yourself you're going to do something, get out there. No back downs. Get it. Be, be, be proud of yourself. Do you mm. know what I mean? Always be proud of yourself and the person that you actually are. Get, That's it. It. get on your speedos. Get on your speedos. Yeah. <laughs> well, get on your speedos and come and do a walk with yeah. me. That's the one. Nah, hell, lads, but mate, this has been boss. Like, yeah, absolutely I mean, boss, really, lads. Really, really enjoyed it. Really yeah, yeah, lads, and you know what? If you didn't know, he reached out to us. Yeah. So, lads, nice one for reaching out to us, lads. lads. It's been an absolute belter. Of course, lads. And I've loved this. I just like get out there and speaking. Yeah, that's what we're trying to do here, lads. We're just. I'm, I'm, I know a few of our lads, lad. we, we have like a group chat there where we all play footy in that every week. Lad, I know a few of them would probably even want to be like fucking get, getting out there doing yeah. this because even like Jay, do you know what I mean? Jay, like that book there, that, that's our mate, lad, and he's just come back from Australia. Uh-huh. He made his own did, book, did book lad, he's yeah. literally, uh-huh. like, our age, lad, he's got his own book. Yeah, fuck. A, a peaceful yeah. book, lad, about like quotes that he's made himself. Yeah, mm. and, So like, People like that, that's what we surround ourselves yeah. with. It got to, that's so, what you need, though, lad. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what you, you need, people like that in the world to keep the world ticking. Actually, yeah. you should come back from Australia, so, lad, there's, yeah. there's, there's the plug for the Australian uh, fucking tour, yeah. lad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nah, but keep us in the loop, lad. Yeah. 100%. Okay. 100%. Smart. Text you, lad. Go ahead. Knock it off, lad. Speed on man war episode. It was... You have to agree with me, that was such an emotional, funny, heartwarming experience that... I feel like if you watch that the whole way through or you listen the whole way through, it was it was something special. It really was. And we absolutely loved having them on today. But if you are struggling, please get up and just go and do something. It doesn't take much to be able to get up and leave the house and go and put your speedos on. Whatever it is, put your speedos on, go to the gym, go and play football or just go to a coffee shop and talk with your mates. Please get up, go and move. Go and make the decisions that you want to do with your life. It is life-changing. And earlier today was a prime example of that. So come on, brave in front of cameras and absolutely smash it. So until next time, see you all later. It was, it? It was a cool dude. <laughs>